SFUSD. That's the place to be. SFUSD. Bienvenidos at the Juan Ying. SFUSD. Everyone come and see. SFUSD. Join our family. Hola, amiguitos. It's me, Maestra Mesa. I'm so happy to see all of you after such a long break. How is everybody? ¿Cómo están? Wow, it sounds like we all had many different experiences. I didn't do a lot of things, but I'm really happy I had time to relax and extra time to cook my favorite meals and desserts. But I won't get started talking about food because I have other more important things to discuss with you. You are all very observant, so I'm sure you've already noticed some of the changes that we've made on SF Loves Learning. For instance, you probably noticed that I started way earlier than I used to, and I'm also in Teacher Tiffany's spot. Well, that was a big change that was made to the show. It's going to be a little shorter than it was before, so we will be having less teachers, but we're still going to be doing a lot of learning, so don't worry about that. Another big change we have made is what we're going to learn. Can you remember the things we learned about our last season on, the sh on our last season of the show? Muy bien! A lot of you remembered some good stuff. We learned a lot about ourselves, our families, our communities, and the differences within all of us. We also learned a lot about our wonderful city, San Francisco. Do any of you remember the fog experiment we did a few weeks before the break? Buenísimo. A lot of you remember that. How many of you really enjoyed learning about that with me? Great! I really enjoyed doing that with all of you. It actually has a lot to do with what we're going to learn about on this season. We're going to base our learning in science. Every week we will have a question or a few to investigate. We will ask questions, do some research, and sometimes we'll do experiments. And we'll also learn about some famous scientists as well, as well as meet some local San Francisco Bay Area scientists. Are you all excited to learn about this with me? <sighs> Qué bueno, many of you are. But I also heard that some of my amiguitos aren't sure what science is. Well, that's totally fine because I was going to take some time today to talk about it. During our time on the show, we are going to be scientists. But in order to figure out what a scientist is, we should learn a little more about science. So, are my scientists ready to get some learning done? Of course you are! Ooh, I'm so excited! Well, let's get started with some brainstorming. In order to answer the main question, who can be a scientist, we need to figure out what science is. I looked up a definition to give us a jump start, and it said, Science is the study of the world through observation and experiment. Hmm, those last words really stuck out to me. Observation and experiment. That's interesting because I mentioned those two words earlier. I'm going to add them to my what is science chart. Observation, experiment. Wow, well, how exciting. We already have some ideas to help us answer our questions, but I'm having a hard time coming up with more answers. You know, it might help me think of things if I remember the times I've done something scientific. Let's take a moment to reflect. What did you do when you did science? Well, when I learn about new scientific concepts with my students, we ask a lot of questions. The questions helped us figure out what we were learning about, and well, I'm gonna add that to our chart. Ask questions. Ask questions. Oh, I just remembered something. At the beginning of this school year, my students and I made science notebooks at home. We would sketch and write our observations in them. Oh, that's two things we can add to the chart. Science notebooks and sketch and write. <gasps> What is science? Nice notebooks, sketching and writing. Hmm, 
Something I used to really enjoy during science time in school was watching my students share their work with each other. They would get so excited sharing their results and thinking about what was gonna happen. I'm going to add sharing results onto here because we did that a lot. I don't know about you, but I feel like I have a better understanding of science now. Let's reread our chart to together. Our question in the middle says, what is science? And here are our answers. Observation, experiment, sharing results, asking questions, science notebooks, and sketching and writing. Wow, we were able to come up with a lot of ideas. And I'm certain these aren't the only ones either. We are so much closer to understanding what science is and also who can be a scientist. Since all of these are things that we do when we're doing science, I think we can assume that these are things that scientists do. Do you agree with me, amiguitos? I mean, scientists? Awesome. These are all things that scientists do. Scientists observe and do experiments. They ask questions. They sketch and write in their notebooks. And they share their results with others. Scientists are really important to the community. And hey. We know a lot about community, don't we? On Thursday, we'll learn more about a famous scientist that made a discovery that made a lot of change for people. There's even a school named after him here. When we learn about this scientist, we will see if they do all the things that we ident identified in a scientist. How exciting. So scientists, we learned so much today, which is amazing because we just came back from a nice long break. So we identified what science is, which is also what, a, what scientists are, and hmm, scientists, which of these things did we do today? Yes, we asked questions and, well, we, we didn't sketch, but we did write. And tomorrow, we're gonna do even more. Mañana, we will build on our learning by adding new questions. What does a scientist do? And what tools do they use? Think about that tonight so you'll be ready tomorrow. This is the end of our time together, but please continue watching because we have some great things prepared for you. I'm so happy to be back and I can't wait to continue learning with you tomorrow. See ya, scientists. Ooh. Oh, hello. How are you? My name is Ms. G. Ms. G. And I'm an art teacher and an artist just like you. Today, I am exploring nature. Nature. Did you know that nature is art? We have art all around us because nature is art. Nature is one of my favorite art forms because it has color and texture. Nature has all of the colors. We can find red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, all in nature. Nature has texture. It has rough, bumpy, and smooth. Rough, bumpy, and smooth. Today, I'm thinking about something specific in nature. Do you want a hint? Ribbit. 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 Did you guess frog? That's right. Here is a picture of a frog that I took when I was walking in the woods by my home. When I was noticing the frog, I saw that it had bumpy texture. I saw that it its eyes had smooth texture and the leaves underneath the frog were rough. Can you notice some colors in this picture too? I see green. I see yellow and I see brown. 
What else do you notice about this picture? What else do you see? I love nature and art so much that I wrote a song about it and I want to share it with you. Nature is art and art is nature. Nature is art and art is nature. We've got color in nature, it's true. There's red, yellow, and blue. Red, yellow, and blue. Make orange, green, and purple. We've got texture in nature, it's true. There's rough, bumpy, and smooth. Rough, bumpy, and smooth. And slimy, sticky, fuzzy, and furry. Look outside your window, what do you see? I see trees and cement smiling back at me. Look outside your window, what do you know? I see texture and color ready to flow. Cause nature is art, and art is nature. Thank you for being with me today. Now go find some art. Hello, my name is Araceli Leon. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Monroe Elementary School and SF loves learning's read aloud coordinator and I'm so excited to read with you all today. We're going to be reading How to Read a Story by Kate Messner and illustrated by Mark Siegel with permission from Chronicle Books. How to Read a Story. Step one, find a story, a good one. It can have princesses and castles, if you like that sort of thing, or witches and trolls, as long as they're not too scary. Step two, find a reading buddy. A good one, a buddy can be older or younger or a person of your age or maybe not a person at all. Sometimes I use my stuffed animals. Make sure your reading buddy is nice and snuggly, and make sure you both like the book. If you don't agree, go back to step one. Sometimes it takes a few tries just to find the right book. Step three, find a cozy reading spot. Outside is fun, but not if it's very cold. Unless you have a thick woolen blankets and hats and scarves and cups of steaming hot cocoa. And not if it's very hot, unless you have trees to shade you from the sun, a hammock to catch cool breezes, and tall glasses of icy lemonade. Inside is good. Couches are cozy. So are chairs big enough for two. Just be careful not to get stuck. Step four, look at the book's cover. The front cover of the book. Can you guess what it's about? Read the title. That might be a clue. The princess, the dragon, 
and the robot. Step five, open the book. This is the exciting part. Read the story in a loud, clear voice, not too slow and not too fast. You can point to words if you like, but you don't have to do that. Once upon a time. Step six, when the characters talk, whatever's being said, Say it in a voice to match who's talking. I will save the kingdom. I am the most powerful in all the land. I'm hungry for lunch. Beep. Step seven. No matter what you read, Hold the book so your buddy can see the pictures. Buddies get impatient when they can't see well. Step eight. If there are words you don't know, try sounding them out or looking at the pictures to see what makes sense. They were afraid the dragon would burn down the castle. Oh, the castle. If you need a break, you can pause for a minute and talk to your reading buddy to predict what might happen next. Mm. Will the castle catch on fire? Will the princess tame the dragon? Will the robot marry the princess? Will the horse make friends with the dragon? Will the dragon eat them all for lunch? Hmm. Step nine. When you get to the exciting part, make your voice sound exciting too. Who dares disturb me in my cave? The dragon growled. Oh dear, oh no! The robot was so scared all his metal parts rattled. What would they do? But the prince tackled that dragon and held him down. You must promise you'll leave our kingdom in peace. When you and your buddy can't stand it any longer, Turn the page to read how things turn out. The dragon promised and decided it was better being friends. And they all lived happily ever after. Step 10. When the book is over, say... The end. The end. Great job, my friends. That was so much fun to read How to Read a Story with You. I'd love for you to think about what is your favorite book? And who is your favorite reading buddy to read with? Goodbye. Hi everyone! Bienvenidos a un año nuevo! Welcome to another year filled with dance exploration adventure with Maestra Jessica and Mr. Manolo from San Francisco Ballet's Dance in Schools and Community. Hoy nosotros decidimos hacer algo bien divertido. Today, we are celebrating the new year by doing something fun in the hot air! Do you know what else is hot? A hot, hot air balloon! balloon. That's right. Today, we are going to explore how a hot air balloon works. Have you ever wondered how a hot air balloon stays suspended in the sky? Well, using science, Utilizando ciencia, we're going to explore how a hot air balloon rises up to the sky and descends down to the earth. Let's put on our thinking goggles so we can explore the science behind a hot air balloon. Put your goggles on. 
To find out the way that air balloons rise up to the sky, we're gonna have to talk about three things. We're gonna talk about vibration, speed, and temperature. Everything in the world has matter. And within matter, there are different molecules. There are slow moving molecules that are cold. And fast moving molecules that are hot. Let's explore what happens when molecules move slowly versus quickly. Nosotros nos vamos a mover como moléculas alrededor del cuarto lentamente. It's cold. Remember to move around the room safely as we bounce around. We're tiny molecules. They're round shapes. Show me some round shapes that move slow. Wonderful. Ahora vamos a bailar un poquito más rápido como moléculas calientes. molecular investigation to the test. Have you ever noticed that when you rub your hands together, your hands can get really hot, and then when you let them go, they cool off gradually? We're going to explore moving our hands super, super fast and releasing them to suspend our body in the hot air. And then gradually cooling down and coming down to the earth calmly. Let's find our space, drop down to the ground, bring your hands together, and let's rub our hands, get them nice and hot. Bring them up as the temperature rises, our body rises, and suspend into the hot air. Whoa, good job, big body, super hot. Then, feel as the molecules start slowing down, gradually cooling as the temperature goes down and will descend to the floor gracefully. Now let's get back to our hot air balloon. Me and Ms. Jessica are hot air molecules. And today, we're living in fire. Let's remember that when we rub our hands really fast, the temperature gets hotter. And as the temperature gets hotter, we rise. We need your help. Together, we're gonna help this air balloon fly into the air. We're gonna dance like hot, hot molecules, all of us. And as we move fast, 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 our hot air balloon is going to ascend into the air. After that, enjoy the view. Ciencia es magia. Now we can connect dance and our bodies to science. And to how molecules move around the space, kind of like dancers. Gracias por bailar con nosotros hoy y nos, nos vemos la próxima. próxima. Bye. Welcome back to SF Loves Learning. We are pleased to announce that SFUSD Grab and Go meals are back this week. Five or two days of food are available for all SFUSD students. Bienvenido de nuevo a SF Loves Learning. Nos complace anunciar que las comidas para llevar del SFUSD están de regreso esta semana. Hay bolsas de comida disponibles para cinco o dos días para todos los estudiantes de SFUSD. Fui infando SF Loves Learning. 我哋好開心咁樣宣布三藩市聯合校區 Grab and Go 嘅食物今個星期回復正常。三藩市聯合校區
會提供五日或者兩日嘅食物袋俾所有三藩市聯合校區嘅學生。View the updated calendar on sfusd.edu. Please note that the distribution days alternate every week in order to ensure that every family is able to access food. Vea el calendario actualizado en sfusd.edu. Tenga en cuenta que los días de distribución se alteran cada semana para garantizar que todas las familias pueden acceder a los alimentos. 请去到三藩市联合校区嘅网址 sfusd.edu 上面查看更新嘅日历。请注意分发日每周交替，以确保每个家庭都可以获得食物。If your family is in need of resources, please refer to the SFUSD website for more information on resources throughout the city, or call two one one. Si su familia necesita recursos. Consulte la página de sfusd.edu para obtener más información sobre los recursos en toda la ciudad o llame al 211. 如果你嘅屋企人需要资源，请浏览三藩市联合校区嘅网站，以获取有关全市资源嘅更多信息，或致电二一一。Hello. I'm Superintendent Dr. Vincent Matthews of the San Francisco Unified School District. It made me so happy to spend time with you today, and I hope you had fun too. What did you make on the show today? Submit your content here using the QR code, or go to bitly bit dot ly backslash s f u s d yes y e s and Watch all of our episodes at sfusd.edu/sflovelearning. And now it's time to say goodbye. So let's sing our goodbye song. For this song, you have to use your whole body. Will you sing it with me? Wave high, wave low. For now, it's time. To go, wave your elbows, wave your toes, wave your tongue, and wave your nose. Wave your knees, wave your lips, blow a kiss with your fingertips. Wave your ears, wave your hair, wave your belly, and wave your derriere. Wave your chin, wave your eye. For now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye bye. S F U S D, that's the place to be. S F U S D, get me the news at the morning. S F U S D, everyone come and see. S F U S D, join our family.